Welcome to Google Documents and Slides. My name is Misha Miller and I work for the Washoe County School District in the 21st Century Learning Division. This is an introduction to Google Documents and Slides or presentations and so the objectives of this webinar are for to help you to become familiar with the tool Google Docs and Presentations and the capability of using that tool in your professional responsibilities or with your students to begin thinking about ways that you can use it uh, to create a 21st century learning environment as a teacher and then also to begin to look at ways of how students can use it to improve their learning environment and understanding of Nevada academic content standards. All the professional development that we administer for our district has a guiding framework that um, is from Microsoft Innovative Teaching and Learning and we've labeled it the six dimensions. So if I click on that you can get an idea of the structure of it and our, it focuses in on six dimensions of incorporating collaboration, knowledge construction, real-world problem-solving and innovation, use of technology for learning, self-regulation, and skilled communication into your classrooms to create student-centered uh, 21st century learning environment classrooms. And uh, I'm going to give you a few minutes to explore this framework and notice that it's foundational and so collaboration. The first prerequisite would be that you start to include um, tasks and learning that requires students to work in pairs or groups and then you can add on to that. Do those tasks have students um, require them to have a shared responsibility and so forth so and so forth. So you continually to add components to it to build a collaborative environment in your classroom for your students. Um, as I mentioned, um, I'm going to give you a few, an opportunity to explore this a little further and later in the webinar we'll revisit it and look for uh, how Google Docs and Slides fits with the six dimensions. So let's talk about what Google Docs are. Google Docs are a web-based office suite. So if you're familiar with Microsoft Word or Microsoft PowerPoint or Excel, then you know that those software programs live on your computer. And you can only access them if that computer has them installed on the computer. Well, Google Docs is an office suite that's, from, that's similar to Word and PowerPoint and Excel, only it lives on the internet. And so you can access your documents, you can access that quote unquote software um, anytime that you have access to the internet. And the really cool feature is that others can access the document at the same time as you and you can be in there and collaborate real time on the same document at the same time because it auto saves in real time. So Google Drive is where those documents live and there's different things that you can create uh, that live on your Google Drive. You can create documents which are like Microsoft Word uh, slides which is similar to PowerPoint, Sheets that is similar to Excel, and then Forms is a Google tool that allows you to create surveys and then also drawings. You could create your own drawings and bring them into your Google Documents. Uh, today we're going to focus just on Google Documents and Google Slides. I'm going to go ahead and take you to my drive so that you can see what it looks like. This is my Google Drive and 
this past summer, uh, Google upgraded the drive. So this is called the new Google Drive. So if you're a Google Drive user, you may or may not have already updated to the new Google Drive. Uh, to do that, you do it in the settings over here and see how it says leave the new drive. Uh, yours would say um, use the new drive. And along here on the left, notice from here under new, I can create new folders to help organize all of my documents. I can upload and convert documents. I can upload a folder. I can create a document, a slide, a form, or more. Underneath new, I have my drive. Uh, that's what I'm on right now. Notice these are all the folders and files that are in my drive. I can also click on this down arrow and it will show me a different view of these same folders and documents. Um, from this view you can see like for instance Camp 21 I have a little arrow next to it if I click on that I have folders within folders and then even within folders. So that's a nice organizational feature that they have in Google Drive as you can embed folders within folders. Underneath my drive I have incoming and those are documents that others have created and then shared with me. And my drive are documents that I've created or they're incoming documents that I've added to my drive. So if someone has shared a document with me that they've created, I can leave it in the incoming and I can also add it to my drive so that I can easily find it and organize it in my drive. I also have recent documents that I've been working on, um, starred documents, and then I can throw away or delete documents as well. Going back to my drive, uh, along the horizontal bar up here, Notice I also have a drop down where I can add new folders and add new files from here as well. If I continue along, right now I am showing all of my folders and files in a grid view. I can change that. If I prefer a list view, I can have them in a list view. Um, I like the grid view, so I'm going to go back to that. And then also, here is a sort option. So I can choose to sort them by name, alphabetical, uh, the, by last one edited by me, by last modified. Uh, and so it's just a preference, and my preference is by name. You can view details of a folder. So say I'm going to choose my Camp 21 folder. Um, And, well, let me go back. So details of my drive in general, but then if I highlight a folder, it will show me specific details of that folder. So the last time I moved an item, the last time I created a file in that folder, the last time I edited a document in that folder. And then I also have a settings uh, icon. Now that I have a folder chosen, notice I have a few more choices along here at the top. I can show the link to that folder and it tells me right here that it's only shared with specific people. So before giving that link to anyone, I might want to make sure that my settings for sharing is more open. And to do that is the next icon. And so if I want to share this folder with others to collaborate with them on the documents inside of it, I can click on my share settings. This window is uh, very common to sharing a folder, sharing a document. Uh, it looks the same for both. Uh, notice I have a link to share. Um, I can invite specific people to share. Uh, by entering their email address here or uh, under 
who has access right now it's private to only myself I could invite others and, it, and still keep it private or I can go to change here and I can make it viewable uh, by anyone on the link on the internet or I can choose and I often use this one uh, to anyone with a link and so when I send them the URL to this folder I can choose to let them only view it or I can let them edit documents inside of it and I'm going to choose to keep it private so I'm going to cancel out of there and click done uh, notice I can tell that this is a private folder because of the icon here if I come down here to a few folders notice that there's the silhouette of a person and that means that that folder is shared so for example this folder real life math activities if I highlight it notice up here my share settings is sharing disabled for me because I didn't create this folder and I only have view rights for it if I click on it and open it up I can view the documents inside of the folder but again I am not able to make any changes to them and that's because the person the owner of that folder um, set up those share settings that way I'm going to choose to go back here to my drive so notice that my breadcrumbs here if I click on my drive I can go back to where I was before and for organization notice that all of my folders with content are along the top but I also have some files some documents some forms some slides that I have created and I haven't organized them yet into a folder and so all those live underneath my folders and those are alphabetized uh, if I was looking at say um, a book study review activity and I knew that I wanted to organize that into my Google folder I can easily just click on that and drag it up to the folder that I want to put it in and let go and it's as easy as dragging and dropping to organize files into folders or multiple files into folders um, I didn't want that there so I'm gonna click undo and bring it back <laughs> All right, so that is Google Drive. And so remember that Google Drive is just a location where all of your Google documents are stored. Uh, I talked to you about the new Google Drive. So that's relatively new, uh, the appearance. Um, Google Drive itself is not new but Google is always upgrading and making improvements to their products and so uh, it has a new interface as of this summer and so at this time I'm going to have you watch the video to show some of the new features and improvements with Google Drive uh, I mentioned some as I've talked through in this webinar but um, it'll give you a chance just to reflect and review some of the new features of Google Drive So we've spent some time looking at Google Drive and that's where all your documents live but the meat of this webinar is going to be spent on looking at Google Docs documents and Google Slides or presentations. Um, and to introduce you to Google Docs and Slides I'd like you to watch this four minute video of teachers, principals, and students talking about how they use Google Docs in their educational environment. So after watching that video, I'm sure you're super excited to check out and explore more 
with Google Docs and Slides. And to do that, uh, if you're a new Google user, you need to create a Google account. It's free. And to do that, you want to go to google.com. And up in the right-hand corner, you'll see a uh, sign in. You're going to click on that. And once you do, you'll get this window. Uh, if you're already a Google user, go ahead and enter your email and password and log in. If you're not a Google user, you're going to click on Create an Account, and it's going to take you to a page that looks like this, where you can put in uh, your information to create a Google account. Now, you can choose to create a new Gmail or email address to use with your Google account, or you can click on I prefer to use my current email address, and you could use your school district uh, email if you, if you choose. So go ahead and either log in to your Google account or create your Google account at this time. So now that you're in your Google account, uh, I'd like for us to explore Google Documents, some of the basics and some of my favorite features that make Google Docs unique. So I'm going to go ahead and click into my drive again. Uh, once you created your account, if you type in drive.google.com, it will take you to your drive. And so I'm going to go ahead and create a new document. And I can do it at this point right here by doing new and document and it would add it to uh, my files along the bottom here. But I know where I want this document to live so I'm going to go ahead and click on the folder where I want it to be stored or located and then a folder within that folder and I want it to live in this folder so I'm going to go ahead and create it while I'm in this folder so that I don't have to move it later. So I'm going to click on New, and I'm going to create a Google Doc. And so notice right away it gives it Untitled Document. I'm going to change that by clicking on it, and I'm just going to name it Practice, and click OK. And notice it changes it up here. Uh, when you just first are seeing a Google Doc, it probably looks very familiar to any other word editing um, software that you might have. looks very familiar to Microsoft Word. Uh, you have your ability to change fonts and Google has lots of really cool fonts uh, to change the font size, to change the text color and or the highlight color, to add links. Um, you can justify, you can add bullets, so a lot of those same basic features that you find in word editing software. What makes it really unique, and so I'm going to share some of the features that are, are unique to Google Documents. Um, one, under File, uh, in the middle you see See Revision History. So remember I said one of the great features of using Google Docs is it's collaborative. I can have multiple people in this document editing it with me at the same time. And Google auto saves every, I want to save 15, every time something's added to the document it will save it. So it's real time and it shows up and everybody can see even though you're at different locations, you're all in the document at the same time, making changes to it, it saves so quickly that you can see what everyone else is doing. And this is where if I want to go back and see when the document has been edited and by who, I can click on See Revision History and it will show me, um, it will pop up with a window that shows me when the document's been edited and by who. 
and I can go back to those earlier versions of the document to see what it looked like at that time. So a really great feature, especially when you are using it with students and you're able to go back and look and see when students have contributed to the collective group project. Uh, scrolling along here, notice I can insert images. Uh, I can insert them from my computer, ones that I've already taken, or I can insert it from by a URL. So lots of different choices. I can choose if I have a camera to take a snapshot right here and include it in my document. So lots of choices when it comes to inserting images into your document. One of my favorite features is under Tools, and that's the Research feature. And notice when I click on Research, a new window pops up here off to the right. And say <clears throat> I'm collecting some information about uh, President Lincoln. If I type in his name, I have a built-in research tool. So I don't have to exit out of my document, go to the internet, do some research, copy and paste in. I can actually do that research right inside my document. And right now I've searched for everything. So notice by my icon here. But say I want to just bring in an image of President Lincoln. If I click on images, it refines my search to just images and say I really like this and I want to include it in my collection of resources, I can drag it over and drop it into my document where I would like it. Notice that, so it's just drag and drop. Notice it footnoted it. If I scroll down to the bottom here now, I have cited where that um, image has come from. Uh, if I scroll back up, I have a little arrow above my images, and notice I have some choice options here. I can begin to teach my students about every image off the internet they don't have a right to include in their work, but they can filter by license. So they can choose to, and should choose, to look at free to use, share, or modify even commercially images to bring into their project, especially if it's something that's going to live on the internet. And then I can also choose my citation format, whether it be MLA, APA, or Chicago. Along with my image, I might want to include a quote from President Lincoln, so I can filter for quotes. I like this one, whatever you are, be a good one. Notice when I hover over it, I can choose, if I click on insert, it inserts it into my document and again footnotes it. Um, I'd like, if I click on my image, I'd like to use text wrap so I can bring it up to the top. And so I'm going to choose to do that and look over here and find another quote. I'm going to return because that's where it'll bring it in. I really like this one as well and choose insert and it inserts that quote as well and footnotes it. Okay, um, I'm going to come back here and filter back out to everything, which means at this point when I scroll down, I can see the images, I can see information about President Lincoln, I see quotes, I see web results. Um, notice when I hover over my web results, I could preview what that my, the website looks like. Um, I, if I choose to bring in information, I can ex I can cite it or I can export it. When I'm looking at everything and I have my drop down, um, let me choose, if I choose a web resource, <clears throat> sometimes my options here change depending on what my filter is. So when you choose to do different uh, dictionary or scholar or everything, always check it down your drop down menus here to see what options you have. So that is the research tool and I love it because it's embedded right in the document. 
Another really cool feature that lends itself to the collaborativeness of working in a document is the comments feature. And so um, if I was working on this document with someone else, we could be in, be in it at the same time, and then we could use a chat feature and be chatting off here to the side, but if we're not in the document at the same time, and we all live really crazy lives and have um, responsibilities and obligations that require a lot of our time. And so I might be working on this document at 10 in the morning, and another person is working on it at, you know, 7 in the evening, that Saturday evening. And so we want to use the comment feature to communicate back and forth as we collaborate on our product. And so if I do insert here and oops, let me highlight. If I do, I'm highlighting what I want to comment on, and I'm going to do insert comment. Notice I have a window that opens up here off to the right. And I could choose to say, hmm, that this is not my favorite quote. Are we sure that we want to use it? And then push comment. And so when my colleague opens up the document, they're going to see this comment off to the side and they can choose to reply to me or they can choose to resolve the comment. Um, so once they've replied and they say, I agree, let's find another one, we can click on resolve and then that comment is hidden. Um, but we can always go back to it. So if I resolve this comment, but I go back to comments, notice that I can still access this comment, I can see what happened, and I can see who marked it resolved. So a really great collaborative feature, the comment feature. It's really hard when you're doing a recorded webinar like myself to show you um, the power of how collaborative it, it is. So I found this really quick, short, one minute video that I'd like you to watch now so that you can see what it really looks like when you have multiple people in the document editing at the same time. So at this time I'd like for you to experience um, what it's like to work in the Google document. I'd like you to use some of the features that I have. So I've created a document and I want you to click on this link to access the document. I have already changed the share settings. So up here in the right I clicked on share and notice I changed here anyone who has the link can edit so anyone with the link and I chose can edit and um, I provided this link, well a shortened version of this link in our presentation so that you could access it and I've already contributed um, to this document uh, I asked for you to uh, share something unique about you and make sure to tag it with your name because I've shared it with you as a link, you're going to be in here as an anonymous user. If I share it with you to your email address, then your, nag, your, your name would be tagged to any contributions that you have. So please tag it with your name. Uh, this is something unique about me. I'd like for you to also bring in images so you could choose to bring in images from insert image or I chose to bring in images with the research tool so I did tools and research and um, did a search for the 2006 World Series 
and I wanted to just bring in images so I filtered for image and then I just drug in the image that I wanted to include with my um, unique experience about myself. And then in addition to adding images, I would like for you to add a quote. And so, I mean not a quote, but a comment. So to do that, I selected what text I wanted my comment attached to. And I went up to insert and clicked on comment. And that opened up my comment window here. And then I posted my comment. So I'd like for you to add those elements to our collaborative document so you can practice using the text tool and bringing in images or with the research tool and then also uh, to post a comment and why don't you try replying to another comment. You're probably chomping at the bit to see ideas for using Google Docs if you're not already using them. And so I've compiled a few examples. This is a, a document that Clayton Middle School teachers use to organize a Pi Day celebration in March. And they collaborated on this document um, by adding the different activities that they would do throughout the day and different people were in charge of the different activities so they added in the elements of that activity and the details of that activity so that this document could be continually visited and edited and revisited year after year and notice that uh, here's an example of using the comment feature uh, within the document. This is procedures for Camp 21 webinars. So this is a document that we used in our division uh, last year. And this helped us to work through uh, our timeline of developing our Camp 21 webinars and how we did them in previous years. I wanted to show you while I'm in here, if I go to file and see revision history, Notice now when I'm not looking at a blank document, I can see when the last time this document was edited and by who and their color. So anything that Tara did to this document is in that, um, it looks like pink color. Or maybe it's red. So you can see what she's added to the document. If I click down on August 27th, I added some things to the document and my color is turquoise. So I added this to the document. Um, and notice that I can restore and go back to this revision, this version of the document at any time. So this just helps you, especially as a teacher, and you have your students working on it in a group environment helps you to see as a teacher who's contributing to the document, um, how often do they contribute to the document. Um, so a really great, really great feature that Google Docs has included. Fifth grade math resource doc. So this is something that someone that someone else has created and it's an open document. So that means that when they went to share settings, it is, um, I believe, public. Um, and so lots of people can access this document and contribute to it. And as you scroll down to it, through it, you'll see that it's a document that includes all of the fifth grade common core standards and teachers have contributed ideas for teaching that specific standard. Uh, to-do list, a colleague and I 
teaching the same grade level put together our to-do list for the 2010-2011 school year and so as we added to our to-do list collectively and thought about things uh, we went back through and would highlight as things were done continued to add information to it um, so a collective to-do list so that we could both collaborate and work on getting things done this is a syllabus template uh, one of the nice features of Google Docs is that if you go up to file and new uh, notice that I have from template here and so once I'm in a document if I go to file and new you'll see that template option when you click on that there are lots of templates that people have created and uploaded to the template gallery um, that you can preview and so the one I chose to look at was a math syllabus it already has a structure to it and now you can just add in the details for your uh, seventh grade math class and there's lots and lots of different templates for documents for spreadsheets for presentations um, and then notice that I can narrow down my categories so I have a students and teachers and so these are templates that teachers and students have created a student report a syllabus a presentation and so you can check those out you can preview them if you say use this template it actually saves a copy to your Google Drive so that you can open and personalize it and edit it to your needs so a really nice added feature are, is the template gallery and then Google Apps in Ed is a crowdsource document um, that's what they call it if it's public and open to anyone to contribute to and so this is just a document that someone's created that asks teachers how are you using Google Apps for your students with your students or for yourselves and then it takes the tool so Google Docs and asks them people to post ideas of how they're using and then notice this is one for how are you using Google Forms this is one how are you using Google Sheets and then how are you using Google presentations or slides so just a way to brainstorm um, with the world on ideas that they're using on how they're using Google Apps. Google Apps has been around for quite a while so there's a ton of teachers that have been using it for years. In fact the video that I showed you with principals and students and teachers talking about Google Apps was produced in 2008 and it's still so applicable how many years later um, and so there's many people that have been using it for quite some time so there's a ton of ideas out there for using it all right so we're going to shift gears here and look at Google Slides uh, the basics and favorite features for Google Slides I go back to my document and I'll just go ahead and create it right here so I'm going to click on new and Google Slides and while this is coming up I'll do a little plug uh, Tara Graves a colleague in my department has uh, one of our Camp 21 webinars on student presentation tools and so part of her presentation talks about Google Slides so you might want to check that one out as well so notice right here again I have an untitled presentation so I can choose to title it and then um, very similar to what you might see in PowerPoint um, I have option to change the background to change the layout of the slides to change the theme so I can open up theme and choose uh, a theme that 
I want to use. I can just click to add my titles, my subtitles. Um, one of the things uh, that's super handy that I love about Google Slides is when I have insert here, um, notice when I do video, I can I can actually, instead of going outside of my Google Slide presentation, I can actually search for that YouTube video inside of my YouTube, in, inside of my Google presentation. So if I'm going back to Abe Lincoln, if I spell it right, I can look for um, ooh, lots of Vampire Hunter. Okay, so Abe Lincoln mini biography YouTube. I can see it's four minutes. It was produced in 2012. Um, and so I can actually search for YouTube videos to embed in my presentation while I'm inside my presentation. So if I choose to do this one, notice I can preview it first. And then I can choose select if I want to include it in my presentation. Uh, I also have so images if I want to insert images again I can upload from my computer um, or I can take a snapshot I can search for them if I search for them notice again here I'm teaching kids about copyright results shown are labeled for commercial reuse with modification and so I can search within Google life and stock images I can choose um, any type. I can choose just clip art. I can choose photos, just face. Um, I can choose for them just to have a specific color in them. Um, and so, or all colors. So a really great feature that's built right inside of Google Presentation. So I'll go ahead and choose this one and select it. And now I can make it smaller, put it off to the side, move my video over. And remember that Google Docs are collaborative. So I can be working in this document and so can a classmate or so can a colleague. Um, if they were in here as well, I would see a little pop-up. Let me add a new slide. If they were on this slide and I was working on this slide, you would see a little pop-up with their, their name or their anonym, anonymous icon so I could know that multiple people were in this document and we were collaborating on it at the same time. Uh, another nice thing is I also have the research tool embedded in my Google slide. So just like in Google Docs, I can research within my presentation for things that I might want to include in my presentation. So Google Slides, a creative way to bring in multimedia into a presentation and for students or colleagues to work on it collaboratively. Notice again I have the comment feature so we can be collectively in the document working on it and we can be if we're on at the same time there's a chat feature um, if not then I can add insert comments and so we can communicate um, asynchronously uh, while we're working on the project There is just a lot to Google Docs and Slides, and we just have this short introductory video. Um, I wanted to point out to you that there are a ton of resources on using Google Docs and Slides on YouTube, just a ton of tutorials. 
and so one thing that I would caution you with though if you were searching so say I'm searching for Google Slides and I'm looking for here's an intro to Google Slides intro master slides so if I wanted to look more specifically at maybe Google Slides and the research tool I could type that in and now I'm going to get some tutorials and presentations having to do with the specific thing I'm looking for and using. Um, I would recommend that you use filters because Google is always changing their product and so some of the tutorials especially if they're older are not as relevant um, because Google has updated their products online and so I usually when I'm looking for a tutorial or more information I filter it but I try for this month and then if nothing comes up but there is there's some great things that are really so two weeks ago three weeks ago one week ago which is great if I don't have anything that's that um, doesn't come up when I search for this month I'll, I'll do this year and I'll look for how um, how long ago it was posted and then oftentimes too how many views as well and the length of it so just a little YouTube tip when you're searching for tutorials to find out more about Google products some ideas for using professionally Every summer our division uh, puts on a Q summer camp and so this was a presentation that uh, was collaborated on from members of our division as the intro presentation uh, to start off each day of the camp. And so notice it's really easy to bring in images, to embed links, um, you can bring in video and audio and so a collaborative effort uh, to start each of our summer camp mornings. So more with professional learning a colleague and I uh, put together a blogging and math workshop for teachers in our district and we worked on this over the summer so both of us had just really crazy summer schedules and we were actually only able to meet face to face um, briefly at the beginning to kind of sketch out what we wanted in our presentation and after that we collaborated on this presentation strictly online uh, and in the Google presentation itself so we each contributed to it we added comments back and forth um, and and so that really saved us a lot of time because it was so hard to find a time to meet face to face so because we are all living in a world that is crunched for time and have lots of obligations um, this is an amazing tool to help you to collaborate at any time of the day to achieve a product Here's another template. Whoops. So remember that I showed you earlier from the template gallery how you could find templates. Um, this is a template that was created, and I know I'm going to mispronounce her last name, so I apologize in advance. Susan Oxfanod. And she creates, um, she's a tech coach for her district, and she creates templates uh, that the students work through. So this is was designed for third grade small group project and she has her essential question and then has included in it a table of contents and embedded tech tip videos for students so as they work on this template if they need help knowing how to insert an image or how to insert a video or how to use the research tool she's embedded that into the template and so you can see for her template instructions she says find a video 
um, that has to do with what caused the Chicago fire, what effect did the Chicago fire have on people, and what were the consequences for the city. And then they have to insert it into the presentation. Um, she has them practicing how to bring in images, so they have to f go out and research and find an image that helps them to describe the fire. And also the research tool. So go out, use the research tool, find something that you can bring into your presentation that answers those questions. And so a template is a great scaffolding tool um, to help give the students direction on what exactly needs it to be in the presentation. And then, like I said too, she also embeds the tech tips. So she teaches them how to use the technology right within the template. Another template. Uh, Jeopardy template. Lots of teachers like to use, play Jeopardy as a review game in their classroom. Uh, many times they used PowerPoint to do that, so I wanted to show you that there's also a Google slide um, for you to do it. I know prior to using Google products, I would use Jeopardy in the classroom and it was a PowerPoint and I would save it would be on my H drive at school so I couldn't access it from home or I would put it on a flash drive and then take it home to work on it at home and then go back to school and I would have forgot my flash drive and I was like Whoa! so the really great thing again about using Google Docs and slides is that it's stored on the internet so I can access this document anywhere I have access to the internet and I don't have to worry about um, which version is the most current because it updates and saves in real time. And then here's an example of a collaborative project similar to one that you might be doing if you're taking this course uh, for credit. And so this is, these are collaborative slides from a previous in-service class that was offered by our division. And uh, participants were exploring Web 2.0 tools and then they added a slide for the tool that they explored um, with application ideas. And notice off here to the side when I'm looking at my different slides, uh, I can see this little icon that tells me there's a comment on that slide. So when I click on that slide, notice that Tara has posted a comment providing feedback. So those those that insert comment feet comment feature that we looked at in Word um, and is also available in Slides is a really powerful feedback tool. Uh, especially when you're thinking when you're looking at Common Core and you're looking at 21st century learning providing feedback while they're still working on it before they submit their final whether it be peer feedback or um, teacher feedback So just scrolling through to give you a different idea of how teachers have collaborated by submitting a slide to this resource and now their one slide contribution they can go back now and look at all of the other tools that others have explored and ways that they've thought about including it into their instruction. So most of the examples I've shown you have been for professional use uh, or ways for the teacher to use it with the students. Um, I wanted to share a little bit more ideas for students using the technology because really if you're working on creating a 21st century learning environment in your classroom that's student-centered, um, you want your students to be using the technology. Uh, this is a really good time though to share with you and remind you that students have to be 13 years or older to create a Google account 
And so if you're teaching high school, um, it's easy for your students to create a Google account and use these tools for education. Uh, but if you're an elementary teacher or middle school teacher, you have students that don't meet that age requirement. And so if you're still interested in using these powerful collaborative tools in your elementary or middle school classroom, I would encourage you to check out Google Apps for Education. You can Google it. And um, what it is is just a private um, protective environment for students to use, uh, for elementary and middle school students to use Google Apps. So you could Google Google Apps for Education and check it out. So let's dive into some student applications. There are just a ton of them out there. And uh, so I'm just going to talk about a few during our webinar today. And primarily I'm going to look at a GLOG. If you're not familiar with a GLOG, a GLOG is an online interactive poster uh, that Susan Oxmanard made on Glogster EDU. And this is just samples for using Google Docs for learning. And it includes all of them, so I'm just going to highlight some of the Google Docs that we're focusing on, so documents and presentations. So using Google Docs for Writer's Workshop, using the comment feature and the peer editing and the built-in writing supports. Um, Notice 2, using it for project-based learning. Um, when I click on this, it takes me to an example of how a student, I presume, has used Google Slides to answer this essential question in their presentation. Um, also for guided learning that includes resources and videos and tutorials. I really like this one for digital notes. Uh, it really makes me think of when I was in college and taking notes from professors that were primarily lecturers and trying to write as fast as I could because I don't think I was a very good note taker. Um, how powerful this tool would be if I was able to collaborate uh, on note taking with other people in the classroom that were listening to that same lecture. Um, we could still choose to take our own notes and then build a Google Doc for collaborative notes because I'm sure we picked each picked up different things from the lecture or you could just start right in the Google Doc and take notes collaboratively while the professor's lecturing. Uh, using Google Slides to build vocabulary and using Google Slides to bring in that multimedia, that multi multimodal, the communication, the audio, the video, the images, the written text. So why would you want to use Google Docs and Slides? Reduce, reduction of paper is an obvious one, um, especially if you're using it with students. I could think of having them write a paper. No longer do they have to write it out on paper or type it and print it, but it can just live electronically. Uh, you can, as long as they've shared it with you, you can go in and you can comment and give them feedback along the process. You can grade it online and nowhere during that process um, do they have to print it out. Um, it's cloud-based, which means it lives on the internet and you can access it from anywhere that you have the internet. It's truly an amazing collaborative tool. It's accessible 24-7. It makes me think of that video when the guy was saying, I had two students that were collaboratively working on the poem at 11 o'clock at night. And so they can. They can collaborate. It, it allows you to extend your classroom collaboratively outside of the school day. 
um, it's more efficient. I don't have to, like I said before, worry about saving it to a flash drive or making sure that I have it saved to uh, my H drive or to email it back and forth. So it's just a more efficient way to organize your docs online and to access them in real time. And then it's multimodal. You can bring in very, very easily all of those different um, media features. So I'd like to revisit the dimensions of 21st century learning. We looked at all six at the beginning of this webinar and I just want to highlight four that I think, think are a really good match for using Google Docs and slides. And so the first is the collaborative feature of using Google Docs. Um, students are collaborating when they work in pairs or groups to discuss an issue, solve a problem, and or create a product. Um, very, very easily can students work in pairs and groups and use this tool. Um, it's easy to establish a shared responsibility for completing the task. They can make substantive decisions together, say they're the debate team and they're deciding what side they want to argue. And then students' work is interdependent. Skilled communication. I'm going to hop right up here to some of the elements that I think lend themselves to the tool. The activity requires extended or multimodal communication and then students must provide supporting evidence or communicate to a particular audience. Um, this tool really lends itself to meeting those elements of a 21st century learning environment. Use of technology for learning. The key is that the students are using the technology and that it's helping to them to construct knowledge. When I think about the Chicago Fire template uh, that was created. Remember the students were having to go out, they were having to research and find information that met that essential question to bring it into their slideshow. And then self-regulation. Uh, Google Docs really is a nice tool if you're planning a long-term activity in your classroom. Um, it's easy to build in the rubrics and whoops, uh, it helps students to plan and monitor their own work, especially if they're working in a group. Oh, I keep doing that. And then also that really powerful feedback feature that allows uh, their peers and yourself as the teacher to uh, put comments to help them to revise their work along the process. I want to remind you that when students are using uh, internet-based products that require them to have an account or you're creating or they're creating student material that may be viewed online, um, you need to be aware of the relevant laws. Uh, you need to talk to your administrator about your use of this tool in your classroom and you need to seek written permission from parents uh, and students for using this tool in their education. If you want to learn more about being a 21st century learning educator, uh, you can visit our website and also our Pinterest boards. And I'd like to thank you for spending this time with me. Uh, I hope that you learned just a little bit more about Google Docs and presentations. And um, I am excited to see how you might incorporate it into your classrooms.